I think it's hard to say. The, the 3666 was my first printer. And I'll always have a, a soft spot for that. Mm -hmm. And so um, when I think back uh, up until 1970, I'd been with the company four years. Uh, I'd written a nice paper that other people at IBM used on uh, uh, the beam characteristics of, of a helium neon laser. And um, I had written some other papers that were of interest. I, I, I was doing some nice work on holographic testing and some other things. But it wasn't until they came and said, hey, we need a scanner. I thought, boy, this is kind of neat. And so uh, I, I would fly on a plane somewhere, coming up with all sorts of patterns, and how do I create this pattern? And I was thinking of using driven systems. And one of the inventors on the, on the patent, and this incidentally is the, is the patent, this is the, the Lisa Jew scanner patent from IBM. And one of the fellows on there, Ken Henderson, said, you can't drive motors that fast. You just can't drive them that fast. And just, there's no way you're going to get that pattern by driving them. Well, that was that, that presents a challenge. That, that's and a red it, flag, right? Yeah, it's, 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 the interesting thing about engineering is, um, I call it problems equals opportunities. <laughs> so if you, if you have a problem, that's when you call engineers. And so my biggest fun, engineering even today, the things I work with, and, uh, my, my biggest pleasure is in solving problems uh, or creating tools to help other people solve problems. Mm -hmm. And so when I saw that we had a problem here, how do we create the scan pattern in a narrow window? Everybody was coming up with these so-called big X scan batch which required a monstrous sized glass window. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, the, the object was, and, and people were coming up with tunnel scanners, all sorts of things, monstrous things to try to produce a scan pattern that wouldn't require such a big window. And I thought about driving motors, dri driving some type of deflectors, uh, oscillating devices, to uh, um, get a scan pattern like this. And uh, when, when we found that you just couldn't drive motors that fast, that's when we came up with the idea of using these resonant devices. Mm -hmm. These torsional devices are resonant devices. They're made by Bulova. You know, mm -hmm. These people that made the old Accutron, Accutron. watch right. had a resonant device in and so these things, when it says it operates at 2,500 hertz, it operates at 2,500 hertz. <laughs> so it's a resonant device. It has a frequency whose uh, that's operating frequency is determined by the length and shape of that rod. Mm -hmm. You change the length and shape of that rod and the size of the mirror and the crossbar, you change the resonant frequency. Mm -hmm. So they were able to create a resonant frequency. Said, hey, that's great. The only problem was the angle was relatively small. But they said, that's okay because we got a 36-inch scanner. 38 mm -hmm. inch, whatever they want. It was a huge size scanner. So that, that was so. It looked like we had a problem solved until we put one of these together and found the scan pattern collapsing on itself because it's a Lissajous pattern. And if you change the phase relationship between the x and y, the pattern suddenly looked like half the pattern. <laughs> and it had scan gaps and oh, another problem, you know. So, but that's what's interesting about engineering. Mm -hmm. So we got together with some people in the electronics area. They said, hey, we can lock the phase in. And they came up with some very clever ideas.